Tell you what, let's get started on this power supply and hope, hope that it turns out as well as I envision it. Now, before I uh, decided to build my own power supply, I went around the internet and I looked here and I looked there. You know how it is, you know, you just kind of surf around, try to find, try to find something to give you some ideas. Now, this is a, a website. Here's a guy right here that builds AB batteries. You could contact him. You know, and he'll make one for you. And here's another guy that had a farm radio. Named, I guess is from 2010 named Forrest Cook. And uh, he had a, he, he, he kind of did an interesting... This is one I kind of liked in the beginning. He took a regular electrical junction box and put an on-off switch, a standard wall on-off switch in, in a box, put them side by side, fed the wires out of the box and into the radio, and inside that box was this little set up here. I like that. That's kind of what I was looking for when I uh, decided to go looking for batteries. Uh, you know, some kind of a battery eliminator type thing. That's what I was looking for. I really like that. And he's even got the schematic in here for it. There, the, uh, the power switch is right there. Shuts down the whole thing. Pretty slick, I thought. So that was like my number one choice when I saw it. I said, I like that. All right, let's go to uh, the next one here. Uh, here's another one. It's a battery radio power supply. You can there's a schematic for one I found in the antiqueradio.org. And here's one right here. This was another one I really liked. It's the Antique Radio Battery Eliminator Number Three or the RB3. And it's an Antique Radios in Jackson, Minnesota. The problem is, and it looks great, there it is, it sits right there, like, oh, I tell you what, it's got all kinds of little power supply outlets on it, right there, look at that, you got negative voltage, positive voltage, all the way up to 135, you can adjust the voltage, it's really slick, it's called an RB3, a battery eliminator, and, uh, you know, I, I really like that one too, but, you know, the problem is, in my mind, this is $159, and 95 cents plus 15 dollars shipping and handling now i'm thinking wait a minute wait a minute as much as i'd like to have this i'm not going to spend 160 dollars to put in a radio i only paid 10 bucks for it's, just, it's not going to happen you know so as much as i wanted that i just couldn't you know that to me that's about an 89 dollar unit right there that thing is no way in my mind worth 160 dollars plus uh, fifteen dollars shipping. That's that's the way I saw it. Anyway, nice looking unit though. I have to admit, but I don't think it's worth that kind of expense. So that left me to search around a little bit more, and this is what I finally came up with: the Mississippi uh, Historical Radio and Broadcasting Society, and they show you how to make a really cool battery radio power supply with a minimal amount of parts. And there it is right there. Now this one puts out 90 volts and 1.5 and volts. It takes two transformers back to back. And all the part uh, numbers are written down and everything. I've, I mean, not part numbers, but values are written on. I have, I've already copied this, blown it up. And I've written all the, uh, the values uh, for each component. Down here is the values listed for each one. Now, well, of course, now we need 90 volts and we don't need 1.5 volts. We need 4 volts. So what we're going to have to do is this uses a voltage regulator called a LM317 right there. And we're going to have to adjust. We're going to have to put a different size resistor in here of R2, which regulates the, the juice through that thing. And we're going to change the value using a 1K ohm potentiometer. And we'll show you how to do that later. And we're going to wind up getting 4 to 4.5 volts out of here, whatever it is we need. I think it's 4.5 volts is actually what we need. So, let's take a look at the schematic. It's blown up a little bit bigger. Well, there she is. Uh, like I said, uh, the voltage regulator is, an L, is a number LM317. The amount of electricity that goes through here, the current that goes through there, is controlled by this R2. And you have a standard Pi filter set up right here, C1 and C2 and R1. 
which will filter the 90 volts coming out of this transformer. Remember, AC goes in the transformer, AC comes out of the transformer, it needs to be rectified. That's what that diode does right there. Then it needs to be filtered before it's sent out to the radio. Same thing down here. They, for stability, they tapped off the center of the uh, secondary, they ran it through a bridge rectifier, which will be made from four diodes, and then they filter it again, run it through the voltage regulator, and it comes out the other side. And it gets filtered one last time in here. This is a, uh, I think this is a, just a standard filter. Yeah. And uh, it, it'll go out here, and we'll have stability on the filaments of the tubes and stability on the bias. At least that's that's the way I see it, okay? Like, again, I, I'm no expert on reading these things. I could not sit down and design something like that. I just never went to school and learned enough of it. Anyway, we're going to be building this entire thing on this piece of wood first. We're going to put the transformers out here and the diodes and the resistors and the capacitors and all this jazz. We're going to bring in electrical wire here. And we're going to make our outputs here. And we're going to set it all up. And then we're going to test the voltages. And we're going to uh, hook it up to the radio and see if it works. And if it all works according to the schematic, the way it's laid out. And I'm going to show you how that's done, you know, item by item by item by item. See, it's going to be screws holding the transformers down, you know, that sort of thing. And I'll show you, walk you right through, just like it is right here. Most of you folks out there who deal with these old radios and everything, you know, you know all this stuff. You don't really need to know, all, you know, what I'm going to do here. But, you know, this is geared toward the person who doesn't know how to do it. That, that's why we do these videos. I don't do these videos to educate people in how to re restore radios if they already know how to do it. It makes no sense. I do the videos. Others do the videos on their televisions, their radios, their, their uh, record players, shotguns, car repair, home repair, any it's for people that don't know how to do those things, not for those that do. So those of you that do, be patient, bear with me, and uh, maybe we can have something successful here that'll work. And then if it does in fact work, then we will cram it all inside that little gray box and uh, get it all fired up. But I, uh, I like the idea of that switch that feller had. I'm going to put a power switch on the power cord here that shuts this entire thing down so you know you don't want to be leaving this uh, thing plugged in when you're not at home by mistake or something like that something bad could happen and uh, uh, I want to make sure I make it as safe as possible I'm also going to fuse it just in case so let's get the parts out and see if we can't start uh, positioning I think first I better drill some holes here though and or I'll just drill as I go maybe that's what I'll do I'll just drill as I go this is our test bed remember that it's going to be fun. Now, keep in mind, this is probably going to be a, a lot longer video than I normally do, or I'll bust it up into two pieces. And here we go, folks. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install this uh, center tap secondary transformer right here, which is this baby right here. It's uh, Radio Shack number 273-1352A. It's 120 in on the primary. 12.6 volts out AC on the secondary and it can handle up to 1.2 amps. That will be T1. T2 is not center tapped. It's just a standard old 120 to 12.6 volts AC transformer and they can handle up to 300 milliamps. And what we're going to do is tie the two secondaries together. Here and here we're going to tie them together with a terminal strip in the middle. This is the terminal strip here. So let's mount them to the board and get them both, both of the secondaries connected to this terminal strip. The two transformer secondaries are now connected to the terminal strip. As you can see I've got the center tap which is the black wire hooked here and then the two uh, secondary wires hooked here. And then the other one I had to attach wires to. All I had was a couple of, you know, studs down there. So I, I used a couple of red, a couple of white. And then everything's hooked up now from here, not counting the switch and fuse, of course, but everything's hooked up from uh, here to here. 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, we're going to use these two capacitors, these electrolytics, and a the schematic calls for a 250, mark, or 250 ohm resistor, but all I have is a 240. We're going to put that in like that and like that. We're going to put that resistor between the two. We're going to set up a little pie filter here so we can filter this stuff out. And I'm going to go ahead and install a terminal strip here and a terminal strip here next to it. And then we'll run the two wires from this terminal strip out. So what I'm talking about is this capacitor right here, this capacitor right here with the 240 ohm uh, resistor between them and then a couple of wires out for our 90 volts. And I need to put a diode in there. I didn't bring the diode unfortunately. Uh, that would be just a matter of soldering from here to the terminal strip when I do get the diode in. I'll show you that here in a minute. Now before we go any further, I want you to notice that this is what's called a non-isolated terminal strip. The center lug you can fasten to a chassis and make it a ground. And you can use that as a ground uh, for several items. Now if this were an isolated terminal strip, none of these would, have, would be able to be connected to ground. This uh, tab right here would have been isolated. There would have been no connection between this tab and this center uh, terminal. So this is a non-isolated, meaning non-isolated from the chassis but you can buy some that are isolated. I had an old timer one time ask me about that. He said, well, I never heard of an isolated terminal strip. Well, now you have. Isolated means it's not isolated. I mean that it is isolated from the chassis. None of these terminals would be connected to the ground tab. Look around on the internet. You can find them. One more thing about these uh, terminal strips. Not only do you have the terminals at the top that you can solder to, but you can actually put a wire through these rivet holes. Uh, where they well they're just flanges I guess where they're, they're connected to the board itself you can stick a wire through there and heat it but just don't overheat it now right here that's what I'm going to do I want this tab up here to be free that one right there I want that one to be free so I'm going to go ahead and solder the wire to the hole underneath it same connection well that's about it for now the only thing we're missing that I did not put in is this diode right here that goes between the output of T2 over to the positive of the first electrolytic. It will go right there, right in that space I left between those two wires because this is the output of the transformer and this is the lead to the first electrolytic positive side. See it? Now see that resistor between the two? That These two caps and that resistor form that pi filter. And then the negative sides of the two capacitors which are right here and here. They go back to the opposite side of the transformer, which is right here. So I could have taken both legs and, and soldered them together and connected them right there. But what I decided to do was just put a jumper wire across, connect one there, one there, a little bit neater, you know, same electrical point. Both negatives are connected back to the opposite side of T2. Now, all we have left to do is run a wire from uh, this positive side capacitor and from this negative side and we will have our two wires and this entire section on top will be complete with the exception of the on off switch and the fuse prior to the primary which will go out here on these two wires out here okay now this blue wire I cut to go right here and that will be my one of my 90 volt wires which is this one right here the opposite one will go here which will go right there. And that's it. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, stop this video right here. Oh, by, oh, one more thing I wanted to tell you. Uh, you'll notice that the uh, second section, the lower section of this thing, has a full wave bridge rectifier and it also has a voltage regulator called a LM317. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, help you out a little bit. An LM317 and a full wave bridge rectifier. Now this is your full wave bridge rectifier. That's what it looks like. Okay? So that will be going down here and connecting up. And this is your uh, voltage regulator. Now the voltage regulator will be on a piece of aluminum. I have a piece of aluminum with a hole cut, uh, drilled through it. It'll act as a heat sink because these boogers get a little bit warm. That's why they have that metal plate in that screw hole. 
It's going to be bolted to a piece of aluminum. So that's it until next time when we hook up the bottom half of all of this mess. And then if it all works, we're going to go ahead and condense it down to where it fits inside this box. We'll also have to uh, do something about this R2 because the way this thing is set up right now, it's, it's designed for one and a half volts output. We need four and a half. Now this regulator, I think the way if I read right, it can regulate up to 37 volts DC. Well, that gives us plenty of voltage. We'll just have to crank it out. Now, the way we do that is change the value of R2 right here. And I'll show you how that's done. I got my uh, mentor, uh, Brendan, from Detroit, and another feller named Norm Leal on the Antique Radio Forum told me about this quite a while ago. We'll go ahead and put a variable uh, resistor in there and figure out what it's going to take to give us this voltage, and then we'll go ahead and put that resistor in there. We'll do all that next time, okay? I won't be back for over a week. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock at night, I'm leaving to head to Rogers, Arkansas again to spend the week with my youngest grandson. The wifey and I are going up. We will not be back until the following week. So you all can kind of digest what we've done so far. I hope you've been entertained. <laughs> I hope you understand pretty much what's going on. I'll go ahead and solder these two wires on. And then we'll just let everything sit until I get back. We'll be back... Um, Next Monday, or Monday week, I guess is what you would call it. Next Monday. Until then, as usual, this is John.